Welcome to Steel Code Management. This is Criterion D, Product Demonstration and Testing. The left side will show the testing criteria as well as the success criteria. The right side will show the device state. Criterion 1, the additional and removal of student council members. Test A is adding a new user. As this was not able to be done within the app, I did it with the Firebase web interface. I added two new users, one admin user and one normal user. In order to give the admin user administrative privileges, I added them to the list of administrators within the database. Test B refers to the deletion of a user account. We'll be deleting user at gmail.com using the web interface. Attempting to sign in with that account provides an error message showing that the user does not exist. Here in 2 is individual sign-ins. Test C will test two different user accounts and sign-in. Both users should log in and show the welcome screen as seen. Test D is signing in with incorrect username and passwords. If no information is added, an error message is displayed. If the password length is too short, an error message is also displayed. If the credentials are wrong, an error message is displayed. Criteria 3 is about being able to sign in on multiple devices. If a user enters in a username and password on two separate devices, both devices log in and display relevant user details. Criteria 4 is about syncing information across devices. If a notice is added on one device, it should display on the other device as well. Criterion 5, 6 and 7 shows the functionality of the product list. Products can be showed in the list and also added. New products can be added. Once a product is added together with its quantity and price, it is immediately added to the stock list. The product information can be updated with changes to product name, changes to quantity and changes to price or immediately reflected in the database. The product can also be deleted and removed from the database. Criterion 8 is about the checkout system. Clicking on the checkout tab shows the user a grid view of the products as well as a checkout area for items that are currently in the basket. When a card is clicked upon, it is added to the basket. Clicking the floating action button the, uh, would check out the items and display the total as well as a QR code to allow for payment. Clicking paid will remove all items in the basket and also remove the stock, original stock quantity. Items can also be added to the basket and cancelled by using the cancel button. This will mean there's no change in the stock. Criteria 9 and 10 refer to the finance part of the app. The financing section shows the total profit, total income and total expenditure as well as breaking it down into category by category and showing profit, income and expenditure for each individual category. A graph is also shown for both income and expenditure, showing the breakdown by category. Criteria 11 refers to logo of transactions. There are two ways transactions can be added. One way is to tuck shop to the checkout. I'll create a checkout value of 10 RMB. Once this is paid, it is automatically added to the inflow list under the tuck shop category as shown on the top of the screen. It records the current time corresponding to when the transaction was added. The second way to add a transaction is to do it manually. We will demonstrate this in the charity category. An updated a new transaction should update the graph as well as the category profit. Clicking add a transaction allows the user to enter a description as well as enter the transaction amount. The transaction amount for this test is 400. Adding it immediately adds it to the database and also updates the current category profit and the pie chart with the new inflow. This can also be updated to 
make a change to the transaction amount. This change is immediately reflected within the category profit as well as the total inflows and in the pie chart. A transaction can also be deleted. When delete is clicked, a confirmation dialog shows up and once it is confirmed, all the necessary places are updated with the new information. Test UMV refer to differences between administrative level and normal level users. If signing in with a user account, there should be a difference in the UI and the user is not able to see add buttons for notices and products and manual transactions. However, the user is still able to carry out touchshop transactions and these will still be logged in the database as normal. The most recent one is seen at the top. This is the end of Criterion D for Stuco management. Thank you.